what's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your sister from another Mr. Thrifting Thick Chick. And yes, I am here with another tag video. And this one right here is called the Scariest Things Tag. We're trying to keep in with the little Halloween theme, little situational. Um, so that is what we're doing. I do have a couple of Halloween videos that I need to get out before Halloween, girl. Because um, I bought this stuff and I need to get those videos done. But I've been a little busy. But without further ado, um, we're going to go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this here particular tag video. Also, look out for an Asian snack food taste test with me and the Juice Man. And they are some gross things in there. You best believe that. So that's going to be a really, really fun video. Hopefully, it'll be a Monday. If not Monday, look for it probably later on in the week. But it'll definitely be up next week. For sure, okay? But let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this here particular tag video. And I tag every single person that's watching this video right now. First question. What is your scariest real life experience? Um, I think my scariest real life experience was when I had a near death experience. Um, I almost was in a, uh, what could have possibly been a, a fatal car accident. Um, I was almost in a fatal car accident. I wasn't in one. But uh, it was literally a half fracture away from um, being me, okay? Driving on the interstate and there was this el elderly man. Me, it was me and the juice man, by the way. And this happened about, probably about two years ago. It was me and the juice man on the interstate. And it was this elderly man who was driving. And the juice man apparently said that his mom, she, she goes up and down this. Because, I mean, if you live where I live, it's like, it's only one way to get to, like, these plants and things like that. And most folks, you know, travel these interstates all the time. And there's this older guy who's always on the interstate. And he's always going 30, 35 miles per hour. And the juice man says he passes them every night going to work. So, we were on the interstate, me and the juice man were in the fast lane, and this elderly man was in the slow lane. The elderly man going like 30, 35 miles per hour, but it's it's a construction zone. And me and the juice man, we will always say, I kid you not, we will always say that one day something's bad going to happen to the man. Because, I mean, he always going really, really slow. His tail lights hardly ever work. Half of the time, his headlights are out. It's, it's like a really, really, really bad situation. You know, 18-wheelers can hardly, you know, they can barely... um uh, uh, stop when it's you know they're going really really fast and half of these folks be driving like bats out of hell and every all these all this stuff like this so this particular night me and the juice man we were on the interstate driving and we were you know uh, me and the juice man in the fast lane this guy was in the slow lane but like I said it's construction zone so everybody had to go um I think it was like 45 in this particular section but as you get on up, it went on up to 65 and everything like that. But the elderly man he always you know he always stays at 30 35 miles per hour. And I notice I look in my rear view mirror and I see an 18 wheeler. I mean, I'm telling you, y'all, he was coming so damn fast. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And they have guardrails on either side. So you so if you see something about to happen, it's really nothing that you can do. So all I can do is sit there and pray. And the literally, the 18 wheeler, it, he was going every bit of 70, 75 miles per hour. And this this elderly man going 30, 35 miles per hour. He hit the elderly man, knocked the car. I mean, y'all, the car was so smashed. And this 18-wheeler had uh, other cars. You know, the 18-wheelers the that be, you know, carrying the cars and things like that. Smashed, completely smashed the top of the man's um, car. Okay, the man died, of course. Completely smashed the top of the man's car. And the 18-wheeler went down in, like, this little ditch situation. The man's horn was just blowing the entire time. Me and the juice man are literally, cause I was I was in such shock that I was sitting there like, I mean I had completely stopped. And the juice man was like, go 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 go. And I, I mean because I I was just in shock because this had just happened in, in in front of my eyes. But the juice man was telling me to go because it was other cars coming really really fast. And the thing is, they don't know that an accident just happened. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what the fuck just happened. So they're coming fast, but he's telling me to go and get out of the road because I needed to pull over. You know, I wanted to see if everybody was okay. But the thing is, it was other cars that had already stopped. And the juice man was like, Bay, um, I don't think you need to walk over there and look. I mean, because we can clearly tell that it was a bad situation. He was like, I don't think you need to walk over there and look because there was already like 10, 15 other cars that had pulled over and they went over there to, to, to check on them. And he was like, I don't think you need to go over there. He's because cause I, I have panic attacks really, really bad. He was like, I don't think you need to go over there and look at that situation. So we pulled over and I sat there for a good, y'all, I sat there for a good 10, 15 minutes. Then, of course, the ambulance came. It was fire trucks. It was so 
many fire and rescue people that had came and um I heard that the man died. I don't know him personally or anything like that, but I heard that the man died. And I mean it was it was a very, very sad and horrible situation, you guys. I was I was traumatized for the longest about that situation because literally if that, that 18 wheeler would have swerved in the slightest, that would have been me and the juice man underneath that 18 wheeler. And I, I'm not wishing, you know, death on anybody. But I thank the Lord for sparing my, me and the juice man's life. I really honestly and truly do. It was a horrible situation that had happened. I just, oh my God, y'all. Just just me, just thinking about it again, it's bringing up all those memories. But that was my scariest real life experience. I had never experienced, um, you know, a fatal a fatality like that. I mean, I didn't see the man laying on the ground or anything like that. But he was in a smash car. 18 wheeler had literally ran over the top of his car. So I can only imagine. I don't even want to think about it anymore. All right. Um... What is my scariest paranormal experience? I've actually done a video on this as far as my scariest paranormal experience is concerned. My scariest paranormal experience was in my very first apartment when I was living in a studio apartment downtown. I have a video on that over on my um, my daily vlog channel. I think it's um, Paranormal Vlog, My Haunted House or something like that. And um, that was, uh, uh, that, that place was haunted, it's still haunted to this day and I was having sleep paralysis episodes every single night in that apartment and I was you know situations to where I'm floating downstairs and I'm seeing like demonic people slaves and y'all it was bad I'm telling you it was bad y'all need to go over and check out that video um paranormal my paranormal vlog my haunted house or something like that I'll try to find that video and I'll link it down in the description box for you guys to check it out okay all right, the next thing, um, the scariest movie you've ever seen. You know what? I don't really get scared like that when it comes to movies. Um, but I guess the scariest movies, movies, I'm going to put plural, is anything um, that is based on a true story. Those are the ones that creep me out the most. You know, stuff like Jason and Michael Myers and shit like that. That stuff doesn't scare me because, I mean... It just doesn't. But if you sit there and put something in front of me about a doll who was possessed like Annabelle, that stuff to me is creepy because it actually happened. And I know that it can happen. You kind of get what I'm saying? So I guess anything that's based on a true story is what scares me the most. Okay. Are you afraid of the dark? Why or why not? Yes, I am. I am afraid of the dark. Don't laugh. I'm afraid of the dark simply because, let me tell y'all something about the dark, and this may take a second. It ain't gonna take very long. Try this, okay? Don't do it with your husband in the room. Don't do it with your children in the room. Do it when you are by yourself and nobody else in the entire house, okay? Ain't nobody else in the entire house. When you're in the bed, what I want you to do is, when you're in your bedroom, laying, laying down on your bed, I want you to turn your lights off completely, Leave your bedroom door open. I want every light in the house off. I don't want no TVs. I don't want nothing. If you don't tell me, it looks like when it's when it's pitch black, it looks like shit is moving around the room. I mean, of course, it's you know probably figments of your imagination. But when it's completely dark, it looks like shit be moving in the room, and I don't I don't like that. Especially because when I'm in the room, bitch, my eyes be like this. As a matter of fact, I have a daily vlog. On my vlog channel where I said scary. I think it's titled scariest night ever. I'll also link that down in the description box. So you guys can go over and check that out. Y'all. It's like when it's completely dark. That is some spooky dookie ass shit. I do not like complete darkness. Not because I'm just some scary cat. But because it looks like shit be moving in the dark. And I, 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 I'm not about that shit moving in the dark life. Okay so yeah. Um, yes I am afraid of the dark. And that's why because it looks like shit be moving. Okay. Um, but what's crazy is it, like if the juice man is here or if I have other people in the house with me, I don't really care about it being dark in my room. But if I'm just home by myself, I'm not finna sleep in complete darkness where ain't no lights on in the house, no TV, no nothing negative. I absolutely have to sleep with my TV on every single night. I don't care if I'm if people in the house with me or not. I have to sleep with my TV on at least. Um, does your hometown have any scary stories or legends? Yes. Um, of course, I know this is fake and it's some shit that somebody made up in my high school, probably. But we had this story to where it was like a, 
a road that you know how you have these really really long road long 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 dirt roads on in these country towns and things like that it was a country road that a lot of people live down or whatever but the the urban legend quote unquote is that if you go down this long dirt road at night and you're driving alone there is a six-legged lady that chases your car and if she gets too close to your car um she'll break the windows out and jump in it's it's of course I'm pretty sure some damn kids made some shit like that up because, girl, I mean, it was always the kids in school and things that were saying this uh, uh, six-legged lady was, you know, chasing people's cars. You go down this road by yourself at night. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who will not go down that road by themselves at night because I guess the mere thought of just thinking about it, okay? You know the shit ain't real, but I'm driving down this long road by myself at night. The first thing that I'm going to think about is, damn, uh, this six-legged lady. And I'm thinking, you know, th that'll be the very time you'll want to get a damn flat tire or whatever. But let me tell you a little bit of something about me, girl. I will literally, okay, I will literally ride that mug on the rim. I don't give a damn. Okay, you got a flat tire? Okay. Uh, boom, boom, boom. We're going to ride it like that till we get to our destination, okay? I don't give a damn. I buy me another rim, okay? Let's just hope that mug don't stall. Because you can't stall to your next destination, girl. So, But that's, you know, even though you know it ain't real, that'll damn sure be something in the back of your head. This six-legged lady, okay? So that is one of the scary stories or legends that's in my um town. Okay, the last one is what is your favorite urban legend? Um, I really don't have a favorite urban legend. I know one urban legend that, you know, people have all the time, which is actually a true urban, urban legend urban legend is an urban legend ain't nothing more than you know uh, a, a, a scary story or something like that that turned out to be true and it's circulating from you know uh, just certain it circulates and it's a lot of these cases that happen um in and around and through the united states of america and that is the urban legend of when you go to a hotel room you know you smell a certain type of odor and things like that and you think it's just oh this room smells funny a lot of times you know a lot of people i'm not gonna say a lot of times a lot of people have actually found bodies underneath their beds you guys can look it up on google and things like that a lot of you go in these rooms you smell a funny odor you call to the front desk you're like you know what i need another room to smell funny in here you know and and, and the maid going and she looking around and shit and she don't see anything and a lot of people have actually found dead bodies underneath their beds if that ain't some crazy ass shit i don't know what is what's even crazier about it is that motherfucker you seriously sitting there leaving dead bodies underneath beds but your name on the, the room that you done rented and shit. That's confusing to me. Why would you do that? Why would you do Or maybe, maybe they sit there and do that shit like that because they figure ain't nobody going to check underneath the bed for no, you know, dead bodies. And then it's going to take a while for them to get to stinking. So it's going to be quite a few people that come in and around up and through here. Um, So they ain't going to know who name, who had done rented this damn room and who put this body underneath this bed. You know what I'm saying? That's some crazy ass shit, girl. That... It's crazy. So next time you go um, check into a hotel room, check under the bed, girl. Check under the bed. <laughs> I tag each and every one of you guys. I will leave those videos that I was talking about down in the description box. Paranormal blog, my haunted house, as well as scariest night ever. Um, also, like I said, look out for the Asian um, snack first impression taste test situation. Also, go and subscribe to my daily blog channel. Add me on Facebook, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye. Sleep tight.